want to start with that on the bottom, or you want to put I the think fish on the fish, bottom? Fish, uh, mussels around, Beautiful. and then and then go with the vegetable. I mean, it's your dish, chef. Sorry. <laughs> You can't have two head chefs. He's, a, he's right? a little bossy, I'm just saying. You know, it's okay. I think we can put a bit more sauce, chef, and you know, like, where's the sauce? Where's so, the sauce? So sauce? suddenly people are going to watch, and you just put in three blades of, of, you know, a couple of meals. Go, where is the sauce? It's not a question I want to hear. Look at that. I was joking before when I said he's bossy, but actually, <laughs> he's quite bossy. <laughs> Thank you very much for this uh, beautiful interview first. Um, now, apparently you're a chef. <laughs> apparently I've been told. Um, what are we cooking today, mate? Well, we've got this beautiful coral trout. I mean, look at that gorgeous color on the skin. So I thought we could cook that crispy skin, yep. crispy skin coral trout, and cook some mussels in red wine. A nice. lot of people think you have to cook it in white wine, it's not true. So we'll cook the mussels in red wine with some leeks, some carrots, some eschalots, some garlic, um, and then we'll finish it with some of your incredible red wine sauce. Thank you very much. Mm, it's kind much. of a, what we call it in French, a, uh, a matelot, which we use um, eels cooked Ooh, in red wine. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, you know, a lot of people think that uh, red wine goes with meat and that's it, but it right. goes very well with fish. It especially really does. when You've got strong fish, and that, that's a beautiful, meaty fish to go with it as well. It really is. So my little trick when you want crispy skin fish is start in a cold pan, or just, just see how I can still put my hand down, that's fine, and very dry skin. So just pat dry the skin, yep. like that, and then a little bit of oil, not too much, and you'll see, because the pa what happens quite often, people put the fish into a hot pan and then the skin hits it, shh, it goes like that. It shrinks. Yeah, yeah, it, it shrinks. It shrinks and uh, it just, it, it bends basically, doesn't it? Exactly. So we want to keep the integrity of that. A little bit of salt, but not too much on the skin. I'm going to start peeling the carrots, by the way. Please. Because um, I like to be the apprentice today. I like that. Is I that, like is that, that. okay, chef? No one peels my carrots okay? anymore. Well, perfect. Okay, chef. <laughs> No, no one pees your carrot anymore. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't a metaphor, by the way. You, you, right. have, to do, you have to do it yourself. <laughs> then what I do, uh, you put it into a cold pan and then you crank the heat. So you'll see that heat start to rise yep. and the skin will start to just slowly shrink, yep. which is okay. I've also got these little weights and I put those little grill press weights. Oh. You know what, one's probably enough for both of those pieces of fish. And that's just gonna gently hold that skin flat on the bottom of the pan. So that's why I do that. And so, I mean, obviously I'm sure we've got similar um, techniques. You just leave the fish on the skin for as long as you can. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Don't touch it, don't mess with it. And when you hear it start sizzling like that, that you might want to just kick back the heat just a little because you don't want it to get too dark. You want it to just sort of start to render down ever so slightly. While you do that, I'm going to peel a shallot. Why in Australia do we call it echelot? Is that the French uh, name? Echalot in French is echalot. Echalot. But it depends where you're from. If you're from New South Wales, yeah. it's shallot. Right. If you go to uh, Victoria, it's echalot. Ah, is that right? And then spring onion and green onion and shallot. It's all different <laughs> by different names. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. It's like the, um, it's like the eggplant and uh, the aubergine, aubergine and the zucchini and the uh, courgette. So I'm just going to slice this shallot. Now the reason we use shallot, not onion, is it's a little sweeter. Yes. And it's delicious. How do you call those in, in, in the States? Shallot. Shallot as well. Yeah. Now, is there, is there, are there things like uh, coriander you call cilantro? Cilantro. 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 They often go for the Italian name um, in Australia and in Europe. In uh, the US they go for uh, the French name. French name? Yep. No, not Spanish, like Mexicans. Sorry. In, um, in, they use the Spanish in yeah, the Spanish US. Name. In the UK, they use the French That's name. That's right, in the UK, right. they, because the English always wanted to be French. I think, <laughs> that's, I think that's what it is. I think you're probably right. So, so we don't want too much in color. Well? Yeah, a little bit of garlic. We don't want too much color. We'll keep it kind of blonde. So again, slightly lower heat. And we'll move kind of quick. We're gonna get the carrots in there too. And then those beautiful leeks, that's gonna give some really lovely flavor as well. Oops, so, sorry, perfect. So this is kind of like a little a little take on a mousse marinière. It's game for yep. me to do that for a French chef. Mousse marinière. Mousse marinière. So I'm gonna to toss my carrots in as well. Cool. And then the leeks. I think we'll cut this like, you wanna cut it on a bit of a bias? Yeah. You know, something like this. Sure. 
you go. I'll let you do that. Oh, I'll toss these in. I'm gonna get a little red wine. I wanted to glaze the pan, but not until I throw my mussels in and then we capture all the steam with that red wine. We have beautiful mussels in Australia. Do you, can I, I put a bit of butter in there? Yeah, please. I, I'm French, sorry. Yeah, I love I butter. Can't, I can't cook without butter. And now we crank the temperature. Make sure I'm cranking it on the right one. Because we want to build up that, um, that heat because we want to create that steam. The butter's going to give it gorgeous flavor. Right? It's, it's funny to have two chefs in one kitchen, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Because we look at each other and say, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do it like that. Should I put a bit more butter? What, you're complaining? <laughs> you complain? Are you, I'm doing it wrong? <laughs> Um, and then you get the mussels, right? in they go. You can see that heat starting to build. We put the red wine, all right, not too much. Boom. Because, I, I, and that takes seconds to open. That's right. I, I, and, and people don't understand how amazing mussels are. Mm -hmm. uh, from South Australia, by the way. Yeah. Great mussels down there. Um, very uncomplicated to cook. Very uh, easy. And very quick to cook. And yeah. the meat is nice and sweet. The only pain in the bar is people don't want to buy is because you need to clean them and take clean. the beard off. So and and these days you can get them quite quite well clean too. You know, so it just depends on where you're buying them. Um, I'm going to put the sauce in. Oh yeah, warm in up here. the red wine sauce. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the production of it because, you know, I grew up in a house, sorry mum, I beg your pardon, I'm, forgive me, ah. but I grew up in a house where the sauce was gravy. Yes. And the gravy was made with that powdered stuff. Yes. And it doesn't taste any good. Uh, and we don't want to mention lumpy. the brand. I'm not going to mention the brand because I'm not going to, you know, I don't want anyone to sue me. But um, personally, I don't love it. But you've created a red wine sauce. It's restaurant quality. Yeah, basically. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful. So I've got, I've got uh, four sauces on the market, which mm. is the red wine that we've got here. We've got peppercorn, yep. which has got black and green peppercorn. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got mushroom, which has got porcini and button mushroom. And we've got uh, the favorite, the favorite Australian sauce, the Diane. Oh, um, sauce Diane. Yeah, sauce Diane. Um, and basically, everything else that's on the market is basically full of uh, powder form right. ingredients yep. with additive preservative and uh, often a lot of sugar added. Uh, and then it's it's usually all put in a little patch and then cooked in that patch like so. Right. And that's why it's got like two years chef life on it and it doesn't have to be in the fridge. Mm. My stuff is actually cooked in a 1,000 liter vat. Wow. With a paddle in it. Yeah. But the real ingredient goes in. The onions, the garlic goes in. Mm -hmm. Then the peppercorn goes in. Then the white wine goes in. Then the stock goes in. Then the cream goes in. And then it's, it gets cooked like a normal sauce, like what we'll be doing now, for example. Yeah. And um, after, after that, uh, it's been filled into the patch and then locked in and then refrigerate it straight away. And that's why we can get a three month chef life if kept in the fridge. That's and amazing. it has to be kept in the fridge because it is a fresh sauce. So as soon as your mussels pop like that, they're cooked. That's yeah. it, you don't have to cook it more. So there's a couple that still haven't. So we keep those down so, low. Should I just take them Please. out? Yeah, take out the ones that have opened. And then so we can keep on cooking the carrots in there. Exactly, I put a little bit more butter. And what I'm gonna do here as well is turn my fish Add some butter and then we're going to cook bernoisette so the butter get butter will get brown, which gives it just an uh, incredible I'm, flavor. I was just going to explain something. Uh, again, a lot of people think that when the mussels are not open, mm -hmm. they're bad. Right. They're just stubborn. They That's don't right. want to open. But when they're cracked open like this, they are bad and you don't want to uh, eat them because mussels are actually alive before you cook them. That's right. Um, and it's very important that they're not broken or open already before you cook them. Well, they can be open and maybe they will close, right? Yeah, but that's right. If they, of course, once they're dead, they stop having the ability to keep their <laughs> shells closed because that's their protection. So what we do now is we remove those. We're going to nappe the sauce back over the top, which yes. is going to give it that beautiful heat. Yes, chef. And that's what that butter is going to thicken the sauce. It smells good, chef. That looks it's amazing. Good. So now we remove the lid and we let it reduce, right? Yep. So we get all that flavor from the mussel, concentrate it by and reducing. And the, the leeks are, become sweeter, the color becomes sweeter in, in the in the sea water of the mussel oh as God, well. So it's beautiful. It's going to be gorgeous. With just that hint of red wine, we turn the fish, right? Because I think the skin's going to be nice and crisp. Yep. Oh yeah, right, that. gorgeous. Gorgeous golden brown. And then we add the butter to the pan. I've got a bit of parsley, shall I? Chop a bit of parsley for the... Please, yeah, nice idea. Yeah. And don't be scared of using the butter because 
All we're doing is we're using it to cook. We're using it to turn brown. You can see already starting to turn brown there. And the whole idea is that we're gonna panne that over the top and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Shall we swap? Uh, yeah, nice idea. Yeah. So you move the fish to the back of the pan. You spoon that brown butter over the top. It's gonna help to crisp the skin. Nice. It. But of course, we're not gonna serve the butter. It's really there just for its flavor and to help crisp up that skin. You see, usually it would take me like uh, 20 minutes to cook this, but there's two of us, so it's That's right. Double trouble. Double trouble. All right, so a bit of parsley in that uh, muscle jus. Vegetable, that, that's gorgeous. And you want to take the fish off just before it's fully cooked. So if you leave it go all the way, it's going to continue cooking even when you put it on the plate. Let me warm up the sauce. Try, try that, Shay. I think this is ready. Mmm. It's sweet from the mussels, right? Because they open up and they release some of their sweetness, that little bit of butter that we put in there, and then the leeks and the um, shallots and the garlic, it all adds to it. Absolutely delicious. All right, so we're just waiting. Carrots are ready, leeks are ready. Uh, cooked in a beautiful uh, red wine and mussel jus. Mm -hmm. The fish is pretty much there as well. It looks gorgeous that and looks gorgeous. Waiting for the sauce to heat up. Yep. And then all we have to do is plate for it's the It's got a really rich flavor. You know, that depth of flavor that you don't find when you use powders. I mean, you can tell it's made well, with powder. And we're using wine. And right. great stock. It's a beef and veal stock, so it's got the gelatin from the, bean, mm. the veal bones, you know what I mean? So good. Um, and if you want, you can actually do that as well. Monte au beurre. Monte au beurre, because mm. that's what we do in, in restaurants, just to give it a nice shine, you know? Um, All right, that fish is done. The fish is done? Yep. Should I, you want to start with that on the bottom or you want to put I the think fish on the fish, bottom? Fish, uh, mussels around. Beautiful. And then, and then go with the vegetable. I mean, it's your dish, chef, sorry. I, <laughs> you can't have two head chef in the kitchen. It's a little bossy, I'm just saying. You know, it's okay. I don't mind. Okay. What a privilege to cook that gorgeous coral trout, isn't it? Big, big, big mussels and gorgeous. So you can just prise them open a little like that, and then you can even take, take a few out, yeah, out of the shell. Exactly. Gorgeous, sorry, chef. Get out of my way, chef. Sorry, chef. Sorry, chef. 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 All right, so that sauce is ready. So I'm gonna choose that off. It's like we, it's like we're working in a restaurant. Right, it's like we cook together. We did, we just never even knew it. No, we know we work together, but one after the other. No, never together together. We work so in the funny. same place, in the same city. Isn't that crazy when you stop and think about it? Like, I've worked on the same stoves you've worked on. Yeah. We went in and out of that same walk in together at different times. It's like. They did the same waitresses. Oh, don't. No. <laughs> Celine. Was her name Celine? Because uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. All right. And then mm. the smell of that. It's a beautiful mix. I'm, I'm loving showing everyone this because so many people think a red wine sauce is for steak only, and it's not. It's beautiful with so many different things. I'm just gonna, come on, clean the plate, chef. I wasn't gonna say anything, but. A bit messy, chef, sorry, chef. I won't do it again, chef. We chef. Mm. I think we can put a bit more sauce, chef, and you know, like, uh, because, because you know why, I'll tell you why. Because I've always said, where's the sauce? Where's so, the sauce so, so suddenly people are gonna watch and you just put in three blades of, of, you know, a couple of meals. Go, where is the sauce? It's not we a chef. question I wanna hear. Look at that. I was joking before when I said he's bossy, but actually he's quite bossy. <laughs> mm. Look at that. Delicious. Man, this is, that, that needs to go into your restaurant on the, um, 
Five minutes flat on the fish, right? 10 minutes for the entire dish. So when you're cooking at home and you want to cook a delicious meal, all we, but the truth is, if you were making that sauce from scratch, okay, that's a day. Exactly. So it's nice to be able to cheat with the sauce. Look at that. Gorgeous. Uh, crispy skin cold trout with some muscle cooked in red wine, a couple of vegetables, a bit of red wine sauce over the top, mm. by menu. And look, we can have a, a, a dinner, just the two of us. Okay, romantic. Romantic. We've got dinner. the red wine. But I don't want to say where's the sauce, where are the forks? Oh, for fork's sake. <laughs> All right, there you go, buddy. Thank you, chef. Right. As we say in Australian, bon appétit. Dig in. Oh, dig in. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, buddy. Thanks for the interview. Um, thanks for sharing uh, your life, your career. Pleasure. Um, and thanks for cooking with me. Thanks for making me lunch. The coral trout, I tell you what, it's a beautiful fish. Oh, yes. Good. Mm. That red one sauce works very well with fish. It really you does. Tell people about that. It brings it a depth of flavor that you just don't even know about. By the way, if you can't get the coral trout, you could use barramundi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a, a strong fish with a, mm -hmm. a very meaty fish. Mm. This is delicious. Caris, thank you, buddy. Nice I hope you guys you. enjoy. Thank you very much. And uh, keep pushing this space. Mm -hmm.